Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and ancestry of, well ancestry results with my calculator, of a Anatolian Neolithic farmer woman from Barson. So this is where she is from, it looks like very uh, northwestern portion of Turkey, very close to Greece, but uh, it is in Anatolia, so it's Anatolian Neolithic farmer, and let's look at her haplogroup. So she has mitochondrial lineage K1. I'm not sure where that's most... I, I've heard that K1 is a Middle Eastern mitochondrial lineage. She's a woman, so she doesn't have a Y DNA. And where, what time period is she from? Let's go ahead and look at that. She is from this time period. This is the Neolithic in Anatolia. In some other regions of the world, uh, this actually is before the Neolithic. Like in Kenya, for example, their Neolithic came a little bit later. Um, this is 62 to 60 centuries before the common era, so a long time ago. Let's go ahead and look at what she scores with my trade predictor. By the way, look at that. Uh, I'm just showing off here that I added a dark mode for my trade predictor. Uh, I don't really like it too much. I prefer the original, you know, light mode. I think it's a little bit easier to read for me. But let's go ahead and start with her Nashakot results. So this is what she scores with my Nashakot calculator. It looks like she is scoring light brown or dark brown eyes. The likelihood of any other eye color for her is pretty low. It looks like pretty much 0% for everything besides hazel. And even for hazel, there's only 6% likelihood. For hair color, it looks like she's got black hair. All right, and for skin color, it looks like she's got light or fair skin. Very high uh, probability of that. And for hair texture, she's predicted to have wavy hair followed by straight hair. So either wavy or straight hair. Uh, is her hair texture, and this is, by the way, adjusted based on ethnicity. Uh, let's go ahead and look at her OCA2 and HERC2 eye color calculator results. So this is taking into account only her genotypes in OCA2 and HERC2 region. And with this calculator, she is scoring light brown eyes. Let's go ahead and, and see what her genotypes in OCA2 and HERC2 are. Uh, so she does not have blue eye haplotype 2. She is heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 1. She's actually heterozygous for this... Um, for this variation as well, which is typically predictive of blue eye haplotype 2, which is kind of interesting. So she's heterozygous for BEH1 essentially, and she's heterozygous for this one variation that's usually predictive of BEH2. And she does not have blue eye haplotype 3 or 4, so pretty dark in terms of color. Uh, you know, not having blue eye haplotype 2, it's a big deal. Definitely quite dark in terms of the color of eyes and hair because of that. Let's go ahead and scroll up and see her polygenic risk scores. And for the polygenic risk scores, it looks like she's got a very low score for schizophrenia, below average score for type 2 diabetes, and slightly above average score for Alzheimer's. What about the cancer section? For the cancer section, she's got one risk variant for breast cancer out of 14, kind of a typical score, but 15 risk variants for testicular cancer out of 18. That's definitely an atypical score. You're not supposed to get 15 out of 18 risk variants for testicular cancer. That's definitely very strange. A uh, very extreme result. For celiac disease, it looks like she's got 5 risk variants out of 12, uh, which is once again very atypical, but not as atypical as the score for testicular cancer for sure. Well, it doesn't matter for her in, in terms of testicular cancer. It's not it's not going to matter for her because she um, doesn't have, you know, the testicles to have cancer in, but it is quite an extreme result nonetheless. Let's go ahead and look at her monogenic traits. So it looks like she's heterozygous for both COMTS and uh, MAOA's warrior versus warrior variation. So she's between warrior and warrior. Uh, it looks like she's got two derived no go learner variants in the rd 2 Pro for the Pro. So definitely less dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. This also contributed to her scoring very low on schizophrenia. Um, is there anything else that's interesting here? It looks like she's got typical genotype for most humans, does not have long 4 5 HTTLPR, so she's got some problems transporting serotonin. Typical genotype for humans is short form 5 HTTLPR, and that's what she's got. Uh, the typical human has a slightly higher odds of depression and stuff like that. So in her case, she's just kind of average and normal. When it comes to lactose persistence, she does not carry any, any derived variants for European lactose persistence. Uh, so she, if she took a, for example, ancestry DNA test, right, they would say, oh, you are likely to be lactose intolerant. Pretty much everybody outside of Europe has the same genotype here, but as you may notice, not everybody outside of Europe is lactose intolerant. So obviously there's some other 
um, variations that contribute to the phenotype. So she does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. That's all there is to it. For the empathy gene, it looks like she's got two variants for higher levels of empathy. And for diabetes, it looks like she's got, does not have type 1 diabetes. Really good. Uh, so this is the most important genotype by far out of the genotypes for type 1 diabetes that I included here. So even though she has one risk variant here, which is kind of increasing the odds of type 1 diabetes a little bit, it does not matter because of this genotype, which basically says there's no way she's got type 1 diabetes. Probably not. And type 1 diabetes, by the way, is a, is a very rare disease. You don't see it um, all, that, all that often. Type 2 diabetes is pretty common, but type 1 diabetes is like less than 1%. Uh, for hemochromatosis, it looks like she is not a carrier of any of the hemochromatosis mutations. And for Alzheimer's, it looks like she does not have any APOE2 alleles in APOE. Very good. Uh, APOE is by far the most important gene when it comes to Alzheimer's prediction. When it comes to miscellaneous section, no micro P, really good to see. Slightly increased cranial size and 1% higher IQ, we don't really care about that. Better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete, good to see. And it looks like she's got one fat gene variant in FTOs, RS1939609. Really interesting to see. Uh, and for EZAR, definitely no East Asian in EZAR. Very typical European genotype in EZAR. She is also not an Asian flusher. All right. For albinism, looks like she's got... She does not carry any of the albinism mutations, but she does have this genotype, which is also kind of atypical, which leads to seven, six times increased risk of cleft lip. Uh, if she actually had cleft lip, it would probably be somewhere. You could probably find it out through the skull. So I don't think she actually had cleft lip, but maybe she did. I don't know. For familiar Mediterranean fever, only genotype for two variations, and she doesn't have any risk variants in either. Uh, for MTHFR panel, it looks like she's got normal human good genotype, slightly lower than average odds for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease, really solid genotype to have. And for cancer... <coughs> um, okay, for cancer, it looks like a lot of uh, variants for higher odds of testicular cancer, I see here. For breast cancer, there's only one risk variant here, and I don't really remember if it's... Um, if it's a common or an uncommon risk variant in this variation specifically. So for leukemia, it looks like she's got some some genotypes for increased odds of leukemia, but I think, yeah, so slightly higher than average odds of leukemia for her. And for celiac disease, it looks like a lot of risk variants here. Two risk variants in this variation, two risk variants in this variation, and one risk allele here. And by the way, this um, this variation in particular, it's the risk allele here is actually pretty uncommon. So it's maybe a little bit um, surprising or a little bit mm, not good for her to have one risk allele in this variation. For the allergies panel, it looks like she's got um, lower odds overall of a peanut allergy. And in this variation, she's got one allele for higher odds of allergies. Uh, and But the odds ratio here is not too great. It doesn't uh, play that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal, this genotype. All right, now let's go ahead and check her ethnic calculator results with my ethnic calculator. As you can see, this calculation was done with 518 SNPs. Uh, we can go ahead and copy all of this, uh, everything that's here, and I'm just going to do it in the in the window, in the pop-up window, right here. Yep. So we're going to put all of this into source. We're going to scroll up here. We're going to go ahead and put this into target. You can do it right here without closing the page and we're gonna ch check who he, she is closest to so it looks like she is closest to Assyrians followed by uh, Hispanic people that's right I actually have a category for Hispanic people followed by Turkish followed by Iron Age Anatolian Luvians followed by Israelite there is a new Grange Neolithic farmer from Britain so there is some similarity to that there is Pinar Basi hunter-gatherer from Anatolia uh, there's another Isla Israeli, so it looks like very Mediterranean result. And by the way, this is my own calculator. This is not G25, this is not something else. This is my own thing. I developed this myself. Uh, let's go ahead and check uh, mixed mode. We're going to try without, without um, you know, messing with it. So it looks like she's getting modeled as a mixture of 36% Russians, Israelites, then Algerians, then Anatolian. I feel like... Um, I feel like this is a very extreme result, and I'm, I need to make it a little bit less extreme by adding distance column at 0 0.5. So it looks 
so this way we kind of made it less extreme um, as you can see it's uh, it's more it's more around the place uh, less outlier stuff like Korean or Sri Lankan or South Asian uh, or like Russian for example so here it looks like basically a mixture of Assyrian Hispanic Anatolian Iron Age and Turkish so kind of um, Middle Eastern or Mediterranean result actually uh, pretty atypical I would say for a um, Neolithic farmer, even with my calculator. <laughs> what if we set this in scom to 0 0.25 and reduce it to 3? This way she's getting modeled as a mixture of Turkish plus Israelite plus Iranian. Well, it's, it's just one Israelite sample. Interesting. Interesting. What if we reduce that to 4? Now it's Turkish, Israelite, Algerian. So it seems that when you add Russians, then you need to also add Algerian, this Algerian person, cos, 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 whatever. Um, you need to add this Algerian person to compensate for the northern shift in Russians. And that's why if there's Russians adding, added into the model, you're, you're going to see Algerians as well. What if we set it to five populations? What if we reduce distance column to 0 0.5? What about one? Yeah, so it looks like... Um, it looks like we're seeing either Turkish, Israelite, and Iranian, or Russian, Israelite, and Algerian. Or like Assyrian, Hispanic, and um, Anatolian, Iron Age, and Turkish. Let's see which one has the closest fit, fit actually. Which, which uh, model had the closest fit? It looks like this model so far has the closest fit. Actually, is this the one? No. This model has the closest fit. Alright, so the closest I could get to it is 44% Russian, 26% Israelite. Um, this one specific individual from Israel. 20% um, Algerian and 9.6% Sri Lankan. What if we just remove every everything else and this should give us the, the best um, this should give us the best fit. Yeah, this is the best fit. So with the this looks like uh, 32 zero, 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 three, two. we can compare that with the others there's zero, zero, 0037 so this is a better fit and it looks like 30% Anatolian Iron Age Luvian 24% Israelite so the Israelite is in every result it seems like 21% Russian 7.8% Algerian and there is some stuff like South Asian Korean I guess that's uh, Hajj Firuz and Turkish and even Mongol here um, if you model this sample in GED match, you will see different results. I'm just showing you my calculator. And why should I show you anything else? Because you can Google it, you can find G25 for this. I'm not going to show this here. I'm showing you this result with my calculator. And by the way, just check out the dark mode. I mean, it's just so cool. It looks it looks really epic. I just I, I just um am not quite used to it yet. I I probably have a hard time reading. Um with the dark mode. Well, thanks for watching until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. You can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. And goodbye.